Alright, in this video tutorial I'm going to make this iPod here. As you can see I got one over here. I'm going to give it some subdivision so you can see a little bit better. I'll turn on the smooth here. As you can see if I select something and I don't tell you, you can follow this command viewer here. So I'll try doing my best to describe what I am doing here. Alright, I'm going to use the number two on the numpad to go in the front view here and to load this image here you need to go over to properties here and there's a little uh, grid plane here as you can see this is the one I want to put it on you just load it through here and make sure the check marks in the box all right now this one this iPod is broken in sections uh, the top piece here is actually split apart and turned around so you can see it and you can see there's a head jack and you know the little switch here and all that stuff so let's go ahead and get started and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this grid here and I'm going to use a snap to feedback grid and I'm going to select here turn that on I'm going to select here and the feedback grid is this little uh, red and green line here you can use a numpad to increase or decrease with a plus sign on the numpad to increase or decrease the points where it snaps to so when I make my first click, I'm going to be looking over here on the right hand side in the property. So I'm going to start in the corner and click. And uh, I'm going to use a numpad because I, I need it to snap a little bit. Alright, as you can see, the width and height is the same. It's uh, 5,000 by 5,000. I just call it 5x5. Five five. It doesn't matter if it's 5x5 five five or 4x4, four four, as long as they're both equal for the height and the width. So I'm going to click one time then drag across. I want to get approximately about an even number of 8 then drag up. And let's get an even number of 14 and click. Alright this is going to be, uh, I'm going to have a front side and a back side so I'll need to get a copy of this. Control C and Control V. And this will be my back side here. We'll just go ahead and hide that. This will be my front side. All right, we'll scoot this around over here a little bit. And getting back here, you can remember I said about the jacks and everything. We're going to be making that later, as you can see right here. This is all going to be one piece. This could be done separately um, for the button. Um, for the hole, I want to kind of leave it one piece. And I don't want to use bullying on this at all. All right. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and start making the... Um, Let's say the front piece of glass here where you can see the text at. So we'll select here. And I'll approximately get about right there. And what I like doing is holding the control key down. What I just did is I clicked and dragged. Then I hold the control key down. Then I just drag off and just move to the side. There's going to be a little blue, uh, little blue line by my cursor. As you can see how I'm dragging what just happened there. Is that you know that looks I'm, I might want a little bit thicker so I'll just drag down and see if I can get another section in there all right right now I'll just go ahead and make a shading domain for that press new there's my new domain um, let's give a little transparency on there since this is going to be the last all right now what I want to do is there's this round circle down here on the pot okay all right we need to find the center where this is going to be at and I want it approximately let's say here and I'm going to drag across now this has got one two three four five six let's make that a little bit shorter all right now you can see I got four all right there you got four that's highlighted and it's in the center because you can tell by because I got two on the left that are blank and two on the right are the blank hold the control key drink down and drag and I want to drag four that way so I'll have four and four that's going to be a completely uh, square hit the delete key all right we're going to remove that we're going to select an edge here and we're going to loop this then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a copy of this control C control V and uh, We'll hide that. The reason why I did that is because I want to see how many points I got here. I want I got 16 points, and I'm going to be making this circle here, 
and I want to have matching points so we'll go to the lines tab we'll use the second one from the bottom it's got little two little bright blue dots on it and we'll turn this back off the snapped grid and I'm gonna hold the shift key and snap to one point and shift to the other one now remember that square had 16 points to it let me abort that and bring this over so you can see a little bit better remember 16 points we want to make this 16 points hold the shift key and we're snapping I'm, I kept the shift key held down and we'll set this to 16 points we'll apply that all right now that you know when I snapped each corner I put it in the center so I'll just be able to drag down just a little bit now I want to keep this real tight to the other square or pretty tight because I'm going to be using another tool here and it's called real surface and it works a lot better when it knows when these two points are kind of close to where to connect at a lot better so if I was to select here and select this let me turn the frames on if I was to select here and here as you can see the edges are uniform the way not to do that it would be to select here and over here because everything gets all twisted up so we'll do that the correct way and we'll validate that alright okay now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, line these all back up here I'll just use the snap line here real quick if I wouldn't have moved everything around uh, I wouldn't have had to shift all this around but anyway not a problem so what I'll do is I'll use the snap line I want to snap this corner to this one here that's in place and we'll bring this one over here and we'll do the same thing this corner to this corner now this one uh, we go ahead and turn all this off so we can see a little bit better what we're doing we'll bring this back just a little bit all right now everything's all aligned but we still got three separate ones I've got the original one hidden so when I go to weld these it's going to weld everything in the scene tree into one so we'll weld all these we'll select group weld all now it's one object even though it looks like a separate object then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go to the vertex mine we're going to be using this option called the bridge and we're going to bridge this together so we'll select the edge on one side and select the edge on the other side and we're going to loop it and we're going to bridge it and these bridge to cross now this is going to be a little different down here it does not matter where I select on the outer edge as long as I select one and loop it now it, it's going to bridge side to side but I got one on here on the top that's not side to side there's need to hold the shift key and click it to deselect it then you can see it's open down here and we'll bridge it or we'll repeat down here like I said it doesn't matter where we select loop it hold the shift key click that one to deselect it and bridge it now this is going to be the end where it's going to have two areas it's uh, on the top and bottom that I will need to, to deselect and that'll be that one shift click shift click and bridge it all right so far so good now when I smooth this, um, I'm going to press the hot key to bring my default windows back up. You'll see me a lot of times where I'll press either zero to unsmooth it or like this. A lot of times I just remove it, the, the smoothness by this little arrow down here instead of the lightning bolt. Uh, it's just something I kind of do all the time. So I want to make this a little bit harder on the edge. It's just too smooth for me. So what I'll do. I will select here and loop all the way around it and I'm going to be using some edge tools and we'll go over here use the second one this edge tool here and we'll bring this together just a little bit like that and let's give some smoothness all right I'm happy with that if I wasn't I could undo it but uh, looks good to me so let's take a look at it right there and if we look at this other iPod here now this is a side view as you can see it's kind of round in the back and flat in the front that's what I want flat in the front but it's kind of rounded in the front so we can fix that 
is I'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of subdivision, not a whole lot. I'm select the edge here, and we're going to loop it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the control key down, and it's going to be held down. And all I'm going to do is just click that blue arrow right here. I'm not going to move it or nothing. I'm just going to reach over and click one time and let go. As you can see, let's go ahead. Let's give it a little different material here. As you can see, now it's got a nice little flat edge to the front, and it's kind of round to the back. Alright, throughout the video, I like to pause the video just to save my work, just in case something goes wrong. But uh, if you see any slight changes, um, I didn't leave nothing out, just, just probably because I paused the video. I might have changed the material or something. But anyway, um, with that said, um, don't worry uh, if you see any slight changes. That's probably because I paused the video, like I said. We're going to go ahead and start with this uh, head jack hole here. And we're going to go into the, use a numpad. We're going to go into top view here. And we're going to select the, um, find out exactly where I want that jack hole to be at. That looks all right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this edge tool here. I'm going to use it and I'm going to use a second one. And I'm going to drag in just a little bit. Uh, what this is going to do is I'm going to make a little uh, round button that's going to countersink for the jack hole here. And this is going to help protect the hole when I subdivide it. So and another thing is I'm going to do it one more time to give it a little bit extra more protection. Like I said, that way it don't screw up when it gets subdivided. And another thing is, uh, this needs to be completely square. Anything that's kind of square or completely square, the better the roundness is going to be. And this jack's going to have a round hole, so I need to make this completely square or kind of square. Now there's a way that I can do this. Uh, I'm not going to show it in this video, but I'm just going to eyeball it for right now. Okay? There's a way that you can make this completely square without just eyeballing it. Alright, with that said, I'm going to bring this back like this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the control key down. And then I'm going to click this blue arrow one time and let go. It's going to it just put an edge. You just can't see it. Now I'm going to drag down again. Or for drag for the first time, I'm going to let go. And I'm going to click the blue arrow again. Alright. Now that's going to help protect it. I've actually put two edges. You can't see what I'm doing. Um, or you can't see it in the video because these edges are so tight that's going to help protect it. All right, now there's there's our little jackal. This is what I wanted. Now we're going to go over to the other one. This is going to be this one here with this little. Uh, it's got a little slider in it for a button. Um, you can make this button here separate. It doesn't have to be uh, one piece, but I'm going to make it one piece for the heck of it. All right. All right, we'll move this subdivision back off again. And we're going to go over here. We're going to select both of these over here. This one's a little bit longer. And we're going to select the edge tool, the second one. We're going to give it a little bit of protection. And we're going to do it one more time. Okay. This is something you got to fiddle with. You can do it one or two times. Um, I probably wouldn't go too many times. This one's kind of oblong. So I'm just not going to scale that in. And uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to hold the control key down, key down and I'm going to keep it held down. I'm going to click one time. And I'm going to click and drag this time right here. All right. Now to secure that down there, I'm going to see if I subdivide it. The hole is kind of uh, still rounded down there. That's why I need to do that extra little click by holding the control key and clicking. All right. And when I subdivide, I'll show you. See how it kind of stayed down there? That's what I wanted to happen. All right. And what I'm going to do is use the edge tool again. This might sound a little confusing. Um, it's not a big problem here. And we're going to bring this in. It's just I'm adding a bunch of edges down here so I can protect this. Then I'm going to bring this up with a control key. This blue arrow come up a little bit. And I'll just kind of show you what I mean when I click this little blue thing here. I'll, I'll give some subdivision. And as you can see, when I it's kind of not flat. So if I hold the control key and click this blue arrow, boom, it's flat. All right. Now I'll 
button's a little high here, so kind of make it want to kind of flush down here. Or it can be kind of high, it doesn't matter. This one looks like it slides in there. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make that down in there like it's supposed to be. Perfect. Alright, let's close this hole here. Move the subdivision level on here. Select an edge. And we're going to loop this. I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to drag on this little yellow cube and drag it in just a little bit. Just made another edge around here. It's going to protect it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this out. Hold the control key. Drag outwards. Let go. Hold the control key and scale this in like this. I want to bunch all these up. All these edges into one. And to do that all we need to do is select the ratio over here, keep ratio. I know it's under size and it, um, it has nothing to do with size. This has to, um, that's going to be another video, but uh, what these do, this will do is bunch all these up into one point here. We'll zero that out by just hitting the backspace and press the enter key, and that's going to bunch all these together like that. If that made sense. I know it says size, but this has to do something else with the. Uh, bounding box. Anyway, let me go on with this here. Let's take a little subdivision take a look at it. Alright, a little too soft. So what I'll do is select the edge here. Loop it. We're going to use this edge tool here. This is the one right here. The second one from the bottom. Uh, this one gets a little bit softer uh, when I subdivide it. Alright, it's not looking too bad. That's what I wanted. I always like to double click off here to see what it's going to look like. Alright, it's not a big circle one. It's, you know, let's take a look at this other one. It's just a little one. I could have made a bigger one, but that's alright. Not a problem. It looks good though, so. And what I'm going to do is I need to make another one that comes out. So what I'll do is I'll need to select an edge here. And we're going to go ahead and loop that. And we're going to use edge tool again. The second one we're going to drag. This is the one that's going to stick out. All right. So we'll select here and drag around. And hold the control key and drag this out. All right. Don't look too bad. I do not like, uh, I need to make this, um, I need to make this a little bit tighter, so let's try this one here. A little too much. Let's go back with this one here. This, this one seems to be a little bit softer. I don't want it too soft and I don't want it too hard. That looks pretty good. Just to double make sure here, what I'll do, I want to select the edge here. I want to protect this kind of bit, so a little bit, so I'll select here and just bring this all the way in like that. That should help protect that a little bit. Because uh, if I didn't, you'll if this is really shiny, and I didn't do all that all the way in, I could bring it in a little bit farther what will happen is you'll start seeing ribs around here where all these edges are at. Um, that's the way it just happens when you bunch all them points up like that. So I just put that little edge in the middle there so you can see a little bit better and so it won't get all them ribs. Alright, we're going to make the glass stick out here. So. Remember we had that shading domain. So I'll be able to select it real easy like that. Hold the control key and hold it down. I can use the I can grab this red cube here and click and let go. 
grab the arrow the control key is still held down and click and drag out just a little bit and I can use the cube or whatever I want the control T but the control key is still held down All right. and I'm gonna let go now I'm trying to get this kind of rounded but kind of a bevel look to it alright but I still want it kind of flat alright that's looking a lot better and there's our domain over here. Let's give this a little darker color here. And let's change the material here and see what it looks like. As you can see, it's looking a lot better. We need to work on the bottom down here. I guess that's where the little plug-in goes at. Right down here. Let's take a look at the other one here. We'll just make a little small one. We don't have to make a real big one here. Use the second one. Drag in. Control key, I'll grab the red one here, give it a little extra, hold the, con the control key is still held down, and I'm dragging in, and I'm going to click one more time, and I'm going to subdivide it, that'll be the little where the little plug-in goes at. Now what I need to do is, uh, everything's looking pretty good, and just about done. Holding the shift key while I'm snapping at I'm grabbing this little arrow here. A little white arrow on the outside here. There's um, these little handles. On this one, it's kind of a, uh, these are green on this side here. And that's because I got the universal manipulator on. All right, let's bring this over to here. Still a little bit thin. We'll scale it out a little bit here. And um, it's got a little bit of a bevel back here too, so maybe I can fix that by um, a little bit of experimenting. So what I'll do is select here and here between, and I'll drag all the way down. Let's give a little bit of subdivision and bring it out just a little bit. Actually, I'll hold the control key and bring this out a little bit to here. Let go. And we'll give a little bit of scale. Not too much. I want to see it give that little bit of bevel look to it. Alright, don't look too bad. I'll look it over real quick and... Uh, We had a little problem here. I must, when I pause the video, I must have uh, did something to that right there. But anyway, that's fixed. All right, one last thing, I guess, before we wrap this up, I'll go ahead and since the front of this here is black as you can see uh, I'll just kind of pretty this up a little bit since it's the end of the video and we'll hide the glass here I will go into one of the views activate the transparency go into face mode uh, when you activate the transparency that will select the front and back of the faces so that said I will right click and drag up select the front part here We'll deactivate that transparent so you can see. We'll add a new shading domain. And we'll give this one some color. We'll go to the system color and darken that just a little bit. Give 
also some subdivision. Let's, let's go ahead and lighten that up just a little bit more. And there you go. There's your new iPod. Let's take a little bit better look at it. We'll turn some of this stuff off. One class close last look. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up. Thank you very much.